seven fifty. Uh, let's uh, talk right now about. Um, well, I mean, these, these, these to me now are just the latest sort of deep sigh stories uh, when it comes to the trans issue, which people keep telling me on social media, you're obsessed with. No, I'm not obsessed with it. It's just that people who are pushing this ideology on our children, on our, our, our rest of our daily lives, they're obsessed with it. And we unfortunately get dragged along with it. Let's talk to Helen Jones. She's author of Trans, When Ideology Meets Reality. She's also director of advocacy uh, to the campaign group Sex Matters. Good morning to you. Hi, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, well, there's been, I mean, a lot of talk about sort of what's happening in our schools recently. Um, and now there is a sort of a, something of a backlash, thank goodness, I think, at these government proposals, well, the rules we've had about sort of gender gender neutral toilets in, 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 in schools, which, of course, you know, boys don't want and girls don't want, and making lots of people uncomfortable in an attempt to be inclusive to trans people who don't know which they are or want to uh, live in a different identity. Uh, now, the government is proposing to let trans peoples use things like school changing rooms first and introduce gender neutral toilets uh, but the women's rights campaigners are saying look this is unsafe and it's actually interesting phrase regressive misogyny do you agree I do really. They've been trying to square a circle for years. They've been trying to, you know, let boys into girls changing rooms, but also have girls just have girls changing rooms. And you can't actually do this. You've got to make a choice. You know, either you allow children of one sex into spaces of the other, in which case you don't have single sex spaces, or you protect your single sex spaces. Yeah. And schools are really messed up on this. I think they're messed up because they use this expression trans child, yeah. which suggests there are some kids who have something different about them that makes them trans. It's much better to do as Hilary Cass did. That's the pediatrician who's looking at gender care for the NHS. She said gender distressed or gender questioning children. They remain of their actual sex. Yeah, I have to say, this is something I do feel very strongly about, and especially after we've seen what's happened at the Tavistock Clinic in North London, which is due to be closed down, thank goodness. This idea that there is such a thing as a trans child. Um, you know, someone living as, the, you know, transitioning to live as the different sex doesn't mean they change sex. And, and a child has not done that and therefore has not changed it. You have a boy or you have a girl, and they are a boy or a girl, for their whole lives until they become a man or a woman. That's the end of the day. Children who are confused, who have, uh, and is it often the case, as we know from lots of research into this, often have other mental health issues, often have autism, uh, often are, uh, are found to actually be gay, but perhaps even families where that would not be acceptable uh, and, and, are, and, and are pushed into different routes, or just are genuinely unhappy, confused children who are told, ah, oh, the answer to all your problems this is it this is it you're born in the wrong body ta-da now you can be happy we with, with, with sort of labeling all of these children as this thing this trans child thing the latest cool makes you interesting thing and it's devastating not just their lives it's devastating the lives of also particularly girls who who now find themselves sort of losing a lot of their well the, you know their safe places that's right. And the social contagion is being spread in schools. It's being spread online as well, of course. And we're hearing now at Sex Matters, not just these children who have other factors that make them vulnerable, but just ordinary kids. It's, it's really it, the last 10 years of pushing this stuff in schools has led to the point that lots and lots of perfectly ordinary children are looking around for some way to identify themselves and make themselves stand out and feel special and explain normal teenage angst and they land on trans. And the other thing I'd say about this happening in schools is schools are meant to be an environment where safeguarding comes first. Yeah. Everything, everything else should be subordinate to that. But when you call a boy a girl or a girl a boy, safeguarding goes out the window. Yeah. You think, oh, that boy can go into the boys' changing rooms. Well, it's a girl. That's madness. Yeah. You're putting that child at risk. Yeah, and again, people talk about, oh, we never hear about these cases, people being at risk. But it is, I'm sorry, it's really uncomfortable. We've seen um, some interesting, some you know, women posting things on social media about, uh, so, you know, the Primark gender neutral lose, about women taking their daughters to their first bra fitting in, in Marks and Spencers. And everyone goes, well, there are curtains and there are doors, so what's the problem? Why are you bothered? Because, you know, men are opening their curtains or their doors um, and, and, you know, stark naked uh, uh you know showing their showing their parts and and girls are intimidated you often you know the changing room assistants disappeared you're on the in the changing room on your own you, I, mean, I mean i have to say i'm you know, i'm a 511 woman i'm very very confident i'm quite physically strong i would find it scary and intimidating of course of course and if you're a child 
you know, if you're a child, you rely on adults to do these things for you. And safeguarding isn't meant to be about let's wait till there's a problem yeah. and then say, oh, look, you know, oh, dear, a, a girl was flashed in school or, you know, there was a rape or a teacher, you know, was abusing yeah. the single sex changing rooms. Safeguarding is about thinking what can go wrong yeah. and trying to stop it go wrong in advance. It's absolutely disgraceful what's happening in schools at the moment, both in terms of the curriculum and in terms of the way they organise the schools. I have a feeling that most head teachers uh, also think it's crazy, but they are basically being forced to sort of go along with this agenda. Um, some of the heads I've spoken to in recent uh, months, they just feel like they, they're going to be accused of God knows what and forced out of their jobs if they don't play along. Well, how can we make sure they get the support to stand up for, I think, the, you know, the quiet, silent majority who actually know this is all, frankly, not a good thing. Well, of course, we are working behind the scenes. All the campaign groups are working behind the scenes to try to get the government to set firm rules because in the end, they're going to have to. This has yeah. gone so far with lobby groups influencing schools that it's going to have to be from central government. Yeah. But I also think that parents are really going to have to stand up. And that's difficult because the parents who notice that this is happening are the ones who have gender distressed kids. And then they get told that their child will be sent to a, a gender affirmative counsellor. They'll be yeah. referred to social services. Their child is angry with them. So parents who see that this is happening and their own child isn't caught up. I think they're the most crucial people to dig in there and insist that the school listen to them and their concerns. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us. As always, a wonderful campaign on this issue. Helen Joyce, thank you very much. I'm going to get Benedict Spencer's thoughts on all of that.